At ServiceNow, we make the world of work work better for people by enabling complex workflows to, well, flow, removing complexities from integrations and transforming manual, unstructured process into digital workflows. It's a new world. The pandemic has taught us that massive, unexpected changes to businesses' practices and outlook can happen quickly. Transformations that were planned to take years or months now need to happen in weeks. To survive, organizations need to adapt and respond quickly. ServiceNow workflows and the Integration Hub allow you to easily transform experiences and break out of restrictive silos. However, for most enterprises, the technology landscape looks something like this. Work is siloed within departmental systems of record that don't talk to each other. This disjointed way of working has a negative impact on productivity, user experience, and risk, and the ability to change on a dime to respond to forced change. Thankfully, there's a better way to make work flow. Deep and wide native end-to-end -end workflow automation. The Integration Hub is the most straightforward way to integrate and automate ServiceNow with anything. 100 plus out-of-the-box ServiceNow core platform actions and ServiceNow workflow spokes combined with hundreds of iHub spokes representing over 2,000 integration actions for external systems. For ServiceNow developers, and builders, Integration Hub built into Flow Designer is the most straightforward and highest productivity way to integrate and automate ServiceNow with anything. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to demonstrate the automatic triggering of a ServiceNow workflow. The simple workflow is going to be triggered upon the creation of a ServiceNow user, and it's going to provision that user to an external system. In this case, we're going to integrate with Microsoft Active Directory. Furthermore, we're also going to dispatch some notifications to our communications platform. Before we do that, let's look at the before state. Now, the user we're going to work with is a user named John Doe, who has just been provisioned into our organization. Uh, we can see here, presently, I don't have any John Doe users within my ServiceNow instance. And if I come over here and have a look at our Active Directory, we can see, although I have a Jane Doe, I don't have a John Doe here uh, just yet. And if I look at a group that I'm gonna uh, add the user to, we don't have a John Doe yet within this, within that group. Okay, so uh, also if I look at my Slack channel, we can see the last message that was dispatched to this channel was at, at 12.10. And if I look at my my team's channel. Also, last message sent out was at 12.10 when the user Jane Doe uh, was onboarded. So that's the before state. So let's go in, let's create a new user. The user ID is going to be John Doe, first name John, last name Doe. Title is going to be VP Sales, and John is in the sales department. So let's submit that. There's our, our new user has been created. Now what's happened behind the scenes is uh, I have a workflow that's configured to trigger off the creation of new users. And when that happens, my workflow logic is going to be executed. And let's look at the outcome of that workflow now. I'm going to share back out my active directory here. I'm going to do a refresh. Before I do, notice there's no John Doe user there. Let's hit a refresh. There's the new user account that was provisioned. If I look at this account, we can see first name John, John Doe. And if I look at the organization tab, we can see the uh, attributes that I was interested in have been uh, provisioned out from my ServiceNow instance to Active Directory. And if I look at the security group, we can see now John Doe has been added as a member uh, to that group. Also, 
um, if we look out at our communications platforms, we can see here messages went out at 1228. The user John Doe was provisioned. And if I look at my Slack channel, the same is true. There's a new user that was provisioned at 1228. All right, so that's the outcome of the workflow. Let's see, let's see how this happened. Let's go back to my ServiceNow instance and let's look at my Flow Designer. So Flow Designer is a now platform feature for automating processes in a simple single design environment. Flow Designer lets process owners use natural language to automate things like approvals, tasks, notifications, and uh, record operations without having to do any coding. And uh, furthermore, Flow Designer can be expanded to communicate with either external ServiceNow instances or third-party systems by requesting a separate subscription to the integration hub. And that's what we're using here in this, in this example. So this here is um, the, the simple uh, user onboarding workflow that uh, created John, John Doe's account out in Active Directory. We can see here at the top of the workflow, we have a trigger. Now, uh, the triggers, what they do is uh, they allow you to, um, uh, it's basically an activity that initiates the workflow. In this case here, the trigger is when a new user is created. Uh, we could have also done other types of triggers like a record being updated. Uh, we could we could trigger off workflows workflows on a specific date or schedule, and we can also trigger them in response to uh, external uh, application actions like a, a service catalog, um, uh, app application event, or an inbound email, for example. So this is our our trigger in this case: a user is created. Let's look at the actual uh, logic of, of this flow. So if we look at this flow, we have a total of six actions here. Um, the, the workflow is bookended by two logging actions. Um, I'm just sending out messages to a ServiceNow, uh, a ServiceNow log. And then I have four actions here that are doing the work of this flow. We can see here, um, I'm going out, I'm creating uh, an Active Directory user. And so, this is, a, this is a reusable um, integration hub spoke or, or integration from Microsoft Active Directory. And I dragged in and, and dropped this create action, create user action into my workflow. And here it's basically um, a palette where I'm specifying all of the values that are gonna be sent out to AD. Um, in this case, we're, we're creating a user and then I'm sending over, as you can see here, first name, last name, display name, whatever attributes that are important to you. Uh, these, are, these attributes can be um, set statically by typing in a value. They can be set dynamically uh, using, uh, by using a script. Or we could use uh, data pills. Uh, these data pills allow us to uh, quickly and easily uh, reference other values in the ServiceNow instance. So for example, here we have uh, a record uh, for the user that's being uh, created or provisioned in the service now. I can browse into this user record and I can go down and I can drag over different data pills like the email address if that has been uh, set. And in fact, it has been set here. Um, I, could, I could drag over user address, whatever fields here or data pills are relevant to, to our logic. So that's the create user action. Here we have an action where we added the user to a group. And here we posted messages out to our, our collaboration and communications uh, platforms. So very simple, simple workflow. If we wanted to do uh, additional provisioning, I can hit this plus symbol. And this is where we can browse out and uh, navigate to other integration hub spokes. For example, there are many more uh, pertaining to Microsoft uh, 365 and uh, and the Azure Computing uh, Cloud environment. All right. So we can come in here, for example, if we wanted to provision a user out to Azure Active Directory, we could do that as well. There's a number, so if I select this spoke 
here, this integration with Azure AD, then I have a number of reusable actions that I can that I can execute without having to do uh, any any coding. All right. So this is a, this is an illustration of how those citizen developers or those business users within your organization can very quickly build out um, you know uh, valuable applications to your organization. So that was a, a very simple workflow here. Um, and over these next two tabs, this is a more complex uh, workflow. Uh, it illustrates how we can do things like model if else condition logic. We can do uh, things like uh, for loops. The typical kind of um, uh, automation logic that you'd see in, in a traditional programming language but now it's it's enabled here for for those citizen developers to 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 do that modeling with zero uh, or no coding. So user onboarding. Here we have an example of uh, of a more complex user offboarding workflow. Whether you are working from the office or working from home, ServiceNow's cloud-based platform will allow you to easily automate and digitize manual workflows in your environment, transforming the way your organization works with speed and agility. Contact ServiceNow to find out how we can improve your IT workflows, your employee experiences, and your customer experiences by automating processes to greatly improve how your organization is perceived.